Aloha, Mud Baby and Pod People and inhabitants of the planet Earth. It is I, your tiki leader, Steve Mudflap McGrew. I am sitting here with a, a comic that just gave me a look like, what? What 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 the hell kind of intro is that? What is a what is a tiki leader? What is a? <laughs> I didn't know he went by Mudflap. Yeah, Mudflap is my radio DJ. Or was my radio DJ name? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. So that that I I don't ever have him say that on the ship right. because it's hard for the some of the employees to get Mudflap. Muff- right. <laughs> yes. Do you know what? They're having you know, trouble with our names. Yeah. Much less a nickname. Yeah. Don't give them a nickname to, right, to, yeah. to say. So I am sitting in uh, our cabin here. Not our, my. Your cabin. We're not sharing a cabin. No. We are not sharing. Not a couple. <laughs> but we're here on the ship. And please welcome my guest, Dan Greeter. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for doing the podcast. This is nice. Man. Yeah. Your room is actually cleaner than mine. I was surprised. My room had a bomb go off in it. I, I, when we talked about doing the podcast, I said, can we do it in your, my, in your room? Cause my room's a mess. And you went, no, my, my room's a mess. Yeah, my room's mess. uninhabitable. Yeah. And then I went over there to get you for the podcast and went, oh man. Now, have you cleaned up? Did you clean no. up a little bit uh-uh. before I came over? No. No. Okay. No. I right. just, I, I moved some stuff behind the computer here and put the mic on the corner. But Great. other than that, this is exactly. This is, all right. This is very nice. Is it really? I think so. This is one of the reasons I don't let anybody in my room. You know, and the guy goes, you sure you don't need anything? No, because... No, I don't need... I, don't I never... Want, I, I never... Want, yeah. I don't want you in here. I don't no. need that. I don't need my bed made. No. Because I don't know if you've had it, but they'll come in, even though you've had the sign on the door... Right. ...and make your bed and move stuff, and I'm like, where is the... Right. Where's my notebook that I was working on? I yeah. think this guy likes having us on his route. Yeah. Or his whatever one less portion. Thing, one less thing. Two less thing. things. Two less things. Because neither one of us... I haven't had service all week. Yeah. I saw that by the plates you just put in the hall. Yeah, I put it by two dozen plates. <laughs> now, are you are you <laughs> the, this cruise lines? They get whiff of this. They made it want us back. Now, uh, where are you bringing the plates from? Downstairs. Okay. Crew mess. Okay. Are we allowed to do that? No. Oh, we're not. No. I didn't know that. <laughs> See, I'm. It's like it's like a high school that you don't go to down there. I know. And I get you know, and I get like a sandwich or something. Uh-huh. It's not like I'm bringing up a stew or anything like that. Just, right. Usually, it's just no a burger. Fish head pot of just stew no fish. Or... You know, it's just a burger or something. Yeah. I run it up to my room. Yeah. And you know, you get your food. And you look around. You don't know anybody. Where am I going to sit? Yeah. You know, yeah. everybody's looking at me because yeah. I. You know, we, we don't belong be down there. No. We're allowed down there. Right. But we don't. We don't. That's not our group. Right. I've never been told not to bring food back. Well, there's just those signs that say, don't Yeah, but that's food. not for us. We're talent. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you we might, are celebrities, you sir. You might be right this. I might I, be right. You yeah. probably are. Because I saw the regular plate place. See, I've got these little things that I take out. Right, from the cafe. Cafe, cafe promenade yeah. or the pizza place. Right. And uh, But I saw you had the dinner I've never been stopped. I've never had anybody say anything to me. I just feel uncomfortable, like, eating around people that you don't, don't know? know me. Well, the, you know, it's kind of like, you know, where do I sit? Do you ever feel like... When Nobody you walk- wants me to sit with them. Do you ever feel like when you walk in down there that you're like this this uh, weird piece of meat that they, they all turn and look at you like, you're not from down here. You're not from down here, no. But nobody ever stops you. No. No. Nobody ever stops. I got I got stopped one time. I was telling this to one of the other security guys I was talking to. I got stopped once because I made a wrong turn. Yes. And if you make a wrong turn, once you show it, weakness, they'll stop you. Yes. If you go down there and look straight ahead, yeah, and have confidence in where you're going, yeah. they will not stop. If you go down there and start looking around, looking around, or looking at something on the wall, looking you'll be the stopped immediately. It's really, can, we, can we help you, sir? Yeah. You know. What are you doing down here? Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's sort of what happened. For me, I made a wrong turn, and I was not only, you know, I was in a hallway, but a hallway yeah. with a staircase. Right. And I thought, well, if I take the staircase, I'll come to the next, I'll just get off on the next floor. Yeah. So when I stepped out the door, there was like a security guy. Can I help you? Because it was in, a, in an area yeah. that I wasn't normally or anybody. Yeah. Well, you look in. lost or something. It's Yeah. Uh, and then what about the crew bar? You ever go to the crew bar? I don't because I don't drink. I know the guys do. Yeah. But I don't drink. So I don't go to the crew bar. Ever. I've never gone to the crew bar. No. I well, I take that back. I've been invited there yeah. by the cruise director for a drink and I've I've yes. done that. But as far as going there and like hanging out, no. Yeah, no. Again, it's the it's the wrong high school. You don't you know if you now I'm married, so I don't I would never hit on anybody or anything right. like that. But I know 
there are entertainers. That that's the meat market. I know there's a singing group that got into a big trouble. I heard about that too. Yes, a singing yeah. quartet or quintet or Acapello. something like that. Acapello. We're not going to say very nice guys. I love them a lot. Yeah. But I guess they hung out in the uh, crew bar. You start hitting on girls that you don't know the dynamics or who's no, dating or who. who's dating the captain or the, the or you know the, who's whatever. dating the large guy that could you know yeah. throw you off the ship and yeah. one you know and uh, I guess something happened and all of a sudden we weren't allowed in the crew bar anymore. Oh, I hadn't heard about that. Yes. We're not allowed. This at is all? a few years ago. Okay, and then we were allowed back in the crew bar, but I it's not it doesn't matter to me. I would go there and get. You know, a 75 cent Coke or something yeah. like that in the crew bar. Well, Not so on know. this ship, but no, this is a different ship with different. Uh, right. What, different I, what I do a lot of times, and for listeners, I mean, if you're cruising, you probably know what we're talking about. You, but uh, I will go to the coffee shop. Yes. And most most ships have a crew coffee shop. Yes, they do. Yeah. So I will go find that. Yeah. And then some, we're lucky enough that our coffee shop on the Harmony is attached to the store. It is attached to the store, yeah. And a lot of times the store isn't. It's somewhere else on a ship. Somewhere else. Have you noticed, and you always have to ask, it's, in the, it's midship, it's the front of the ship, yeah. it's the back of the ship. And then that's when I end up getting semi, like, should I go down? I don't know, I don't want to get lost. I'm, yeah. You make a wrong turn, now I'm in the captain's dining, like the, right. the captain's the, dining you're walking, area. You're walking on the captain, you know. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't belong down here. <laughs> and then, well, on Royal Caribbean anyway, you're lucky enough that you're... Your CPAS card, the card they give you yeah. that you charge everything with, yeah. is usable down there. Now, on some right. other lines, yeah. it's not. You have to have a – there's a special currency that they use. For ship. For ship stuff, and you, you're not allowed to access yeah. to that. So. I was on one of the other ships and went into the store that was attached – the coffee shop's attached. Yeah. So it's the same type of class ship. But the uh, the girl working the cash register at the, at the store goes – you 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 have a uh, guest guest thing, yeah. guest card. Oh, yeah. I, go, I know. I go. I know. You can't shop here. I go. No, I can't. You you, you can't you can't shop here. I go. No, I I can't. Right. I do it every every cruise. No, this is for crew members only. And I go. I'm working on the ship. Yeah. And she was giving me finally. I just I just I I go. Fine. You can put all this back. And I just I I I walked out. And the next day, I came back in, and the guy at the coffee shop, who's yeah. like, "Hey, Steve, you want your want your yeah. vanilla latte?" He goes, "Oh, I saw what happened last night. She's new." Yeah, and I, I wanted to go. Why didn't you step in and help me? Right. Yeah, I saw. I watched from a I distance. I watched from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, she's, she's yeah, she's new. Yeah, so, there's so much to learn. You know, you get on the ships. There's so much. I started doing ships like five years ago, I think, yeah. and the first ones I did. You're in a hallway, uh, like we're in a regular stateroom with the guests. Yeah. Some of them you're in the back, just beyond the guests, yeah. in a hall, entertainment there's a, hallway. There's a door opens and, and there's, there's, a, there's a hallway of just entertainers. Yeah. And there was always like a live-in juggler. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Always a guy who, he's his room was all set. He had posters on his wall. Yeah. You knew he'd been there for a long time. He was the uh, house juggler. Yeah. And Works around the ship and stuff. I did ships for like two months before I knew that you I could buy internet or a phone card. Oh, me too. Or how to get cash or anything. You, I, I had no idea. And this guy really showed me the ropes. You you yeah. learned it before I did. Yeah. Because I, I was on for probably a year or more yeah. before somebody said, you don't ever go down there to eat? Because I was... Right. You know, I was like, no, because I, I thought the the... Wind jammer closed, the dining rooms are done, and I don't know it was open late. I'd get a pizza or I'd order yeah. room service. Yeah. And they're like, no, just go down. And I'm like, seriously? Yeah. Yeah. We're sort of like, uh, and then you go anywhere, and if even they stop, you say guest entertainer. Yeah. So you can you can straddle both worlds. It's like, yeah. uh, do you remember the, um, uh, oh, what was the cop movie with Mel Gibson and Danny Glover? It was... Uh, Oh, Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon was the one with the guy who was from South Africa. And every time he got into trouble, he'd be like, diplomatic immunity. Yes. That's how I feel like. Yeah. When you walk around. Guest entertainer. Sure, you know that back here. Guest Guest entertainer. entertainer. (laughs) I will go where I like and you will not stop me. (laughs) (laughs) I will bring food back to my room. Who are you to stop me, guest entertainer? (laughs) Well, what got you on the ships? I, uh, well, it was... You know, I was headlining the clubs and everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, you know, there's only so many clubs that pay. Right. Do you know, do you pay, know what I mean? That pay well. That pay well. So I, I was getting exhausted of putting together 
a C room with an A room for, you know, you fly out, maybe I do a small town room, and then I go and I do the Cleveland uh, hilarities in Cleveland yeah. or something. Yeah. So then I, I make the trip worth it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. I just got tired. Try, try, trying to tie things together. I got tired of doing that. I, you know, 20 years, Yeah. you know, you're like, geez, I can't, yeah. I don't want to do a string of Ramada ends right. or anything. You know, I just, you get tired of doing it. Yeah. And then you, then you get, yeah, I guess you get tired of the club. Maybe the clubs get tired of you at a point. I don't know. But, uh, and then I was working, um, gosh, I can't forget it. I, he was in the show, That's So Raven, uh, black comedian. Very funny. Uh, oh, I can't, uh, we'll have to edit his name in and later. He was doing this. He had just come from a ship. Mm -hmm. And I go, how do I get on the ships? And he goes, I'll drop your name to or my agent. Which, am I allowed to say the agency's yeah. name? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Don Casino. Yeah, that's who I'm with. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're the big. Yeah. They're the William Morris of Cruise, of cruise Yeah. And um, so I sent them a 20-minute uh, DVD, you know, just me yeah. doing a 20-minute set. And it, I got on. And it starts slow. You start, you know, my first year, I think I did three ships. Yeah. Then it was four. Because they're already booked like a year ahead. They're already booked like a year ahead. So you're doing the fill-ins and the fallouts. Right. And you go on, you do a good job. Yeah. Keep your head down. Yeah. Don't, don't take get, food back to your room. Don't take food back to your Dude, room. Don't, don't be, hit on people. Don't go in the crew bar. Don't gamble. Don't get drunk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are the rules, basically. I don't do any of those, by the way. Me, I, me I have no bad habit. That's why no. my room looks like this. That's right, because we don't leave our rooms, you know. <laughs> and uh, and then, for some, you know, I just clicked. It Boom, I, I was yeah. starting to... And it's a different muscle, Yeah, Steve. It, it's a very different muscle, yeah. because you go out... the. The crew, you know, you do the clubs and you're headlining the club. You have an opening act, a feature act. By the time you go out there, those people, they're lubed up and ready to go. Yeah. You know, on the ship, the cruise director goes out. You know, he does his announcements. A lot yeah. of the time, it's 20 minutes of information. Right. You know, then it's like, oh, and here's your comedian. Yeah. And you go out and Cold. it's... Cold. It is the polar bear plunge. I mean, it yeah. is... It is freezing. Right. You know, and then you have to pick it up. Right. And you got to deliver. Yeah. And every gig you have is you're re-auditioning there's no leftover love from the last time you were here and you did great or you went drinking with the owner you yeah, know, what, like I mean? you know club, what I mean the club guy I like him anyway I like him anyway no matter what I'm gonna book this guy Dan's forever. my friend I'm bringing him in yeah. you know it's not like that you come back and and it's completely different people running the show yeah. you know the cruise director you don't know who this person is yeah. or whoever whoever uh, you know does yeah. their uh, review on you to the company? Well, I don't know. I, I'm starting to wonder if they uh, don't don't look at the negative stuff like they used to, though. You know, like I don't know. It's cause it used to be. Oh, we got a complaint. Oh, we got a complaint. And well, now, I, like, I think you know we they, they know you're going to get them. So we're doing adult shows. Yeah. So I don't think they weigh the complaints. Like, like oh, he went offline on this, yeah. or he crossed the line, or I felt yeah. offended. Well, you're you're told it's an yeah. adult show because they want to get away from the yeah. I guess I don't. I'm not putting anybody down, but the guy in Hawaiian shirt doing yeah ship jokes. Hey, shuffleboard, you little, know, little, ship. You know, yeah. the, they want to get away from that. They you do. Know. They do. Well, I I, I had uh, uh, a cruise director that I've never worked with before, and I won't say the name of the ship because there's no re you know no right. reason to. But uh, I got I got a standing ovation in the the late night you know the late yeah. night adult show. Yeah. The next next time on the the uh, the goodbye show the final you know the yeah. what they call it the whatever the farewell farewell show yeah. um, for the show he goes oh, well we got a complaint last night. <laughs> I go, you did he goes, yeah there was a, there was a complaint they they didn't like your opening joke about your your you looking like a white woman. Oh, and, yeah. And I go, oh, okay. Yeah, what are you supposed to do about that? Well, I was, and what, why are you what, telling what, me before, right before I go on stage? Why would you say that before? It's like, do you want to just, are you are you mad, jealous, or do you feel like that's your only power is you need to tell me something? Right. I don't know what your thinking was yeah. to say, I want to go, did you see yes. what happened? Yeah. And you're going to tell me about one complaint? One complaint. At an adult show. At an adult show. Yeah. Yeah. That's not even... I had a I had a cruise director say to me on a this is a different cruise line. He goes, "Yeah, we got a complaint. Somebody said you used the Lord's name in vain." I go, "I don't." And for me, that's am I allowed to say it or yeah. for me, that's goddamn. Yeah, that's the Lord. That's blasphemy, right. I right. guess, in the strictest definition of the term. Right. And uh, I guess I said, "Lord, Lord in heaven." Yeah. Or Lord Almighty. Yeah. Which is not 
Not blasphemy. Yeah. Or like some people go, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. That's not, that's not, that's not, that's not using the, the Lord's thing. name in vain. Right. But for some people, I guess that is. Right. But he's telling me this right before I go on. Right before I go on. Yeah. And I, what am I, how am I supposed to, you know, I'm getting my mind ready. Right. To go out there in front of, you know, a thousand people, whatever. Yeah. And you're telling me that somebody complained. I said, Lord in heaven. <sighs> You're going, yeah. <laughs> you're going to hell. You are going to hell for that. Well, why would you even bring it up to me? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't get it. I don't know. So before you got into comedy, mm-hmm. you were a an, a newscaster. I was a television reporter. Did you go to school for? I this? did. I went to Ohio State. I majored in uh, journalism, uh, and then I I got out and I you know you sent these tape you know the old. You know, half inch. Yeah, you sent the VHS around. Sent the people. VHS all over, and uh, four months went by. I graduated in December of the year, so it was. And I remember I was home for Christmas. I was home for New Year's. And I was like, oh, I don't have it because back then you had. My parents were like, "You're not living with us. You have to go." But, yeah, you're you know, 18. Get out. Yeah. Like, uh, and so I got a job bartending, and then I got two offers. I got one from Casper, Wyoming, and I got one from Joplin, Missouri. And I probably should have taken the one from Casper, but I took the one from Joplin. Just because it seemed closer to Ohio. And to you me. think, you go, I might know this, the area. I might, it might yeah. seem more like home to me. Yeah. Casper seemed very alien yeah. to me. Yeah. You know, the West. Right. Missouri is still right. Midwest. Which is, which is one of the reasons a lot of uh, radio DJs that are, if you've ever paid attention, they'll, if they come from somewhere else, yeah. they don't really work because the locals go, that's not the way we pronounce that street. That's right. Yeah. That's not the way we <laughs> say that town. So, you know, the, we don't say soda, we say pop. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? There's, so when you yeah. go, go out of your region, sometimes it's not, yeah. not good for your career. And I made uh, $6.25 an hour. That's the going. That was the going rate. And John, I doubt if it's gone up. Nineteen seventy three. Nineteen. <laughs> I'm not that old. And uh, so I got there and I drove into town. I had a horrible one bedroom apartment. I think it was three fifty a month with a Murphy bed that came out of the out of the wall. Yeah. The mall. And I don't know how many people. This apartment building was built in 1910. So I don't know how many people died in that, on that in that actual in that actual bed. Murphy bed. Yeah. But uh, I had fun and you learn a lot. And everything like that. But then it was just like uh, I didn't see much. I did it for a couple of years, and I would send tapes out. You were still trying to get work. At you know, stations. you try to move up to a bigger market. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it did. It just seemed. Then I was looking at the future, and like, okay, let's say I have a family, and I work for WCMH, which is the NBC affiliate in Columbus, Ohio. Let's say I'm working for them. I get laid off or I get fired. My whole family's here. I have two other places I can apply for work. Yeah. I have the CBS affiliate and the ABC affiliate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. And I just saw people, they were moving everywhere. Yeah, they and, just, yeah. The, well, you're, yeah. that that career is the same as the guy, the DJs that are just moving around the country. Yeah. And that's that's one of the reasons that I I am not in radio anymore is because uh, – I, I just didn't want to become that where you're like, yeah. well, I'll take a job in Dallas. Well, I was there six months, so then I went over to the, like yeah. I worked to Denver, I worked the other country station. I'm done. I'm right. not going to go work at the hip hop station because no. there's DJs that do that. Right. You, you see them locally. They'll be yeah. like, you're on the soft jazz. Why do you now? have a southern accent all of a sudden? <laughs> you know, yeah. You're like, yeah. I'm like, ah, I'm done. But I, and then I was just like, you know, I just. Uh, and I wanted to live where I wanted to live. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't want oh, the job to dictate. And so uh, there was a girl involved, and she was from Joplin. And then she ended up moving up to Seattle. And she's like, why don't you come up here? I was like, okay. So I moved to Seattle, and I got a job in sales, which I was really, really good at. I worked for AT&T, the old AT&T. Yeah. What were you doing in sales for them? Like selling phones or plans? Uh, or- no, uh, long-distance plans, modems. That type of thing, yeah. and I was really good. And then they made this is just out of coincidence. Uh, me and the girl, we fell out, but just out of coincidence, they made me the assistant sales manager in Cleveland, Ohio, which is where I'm from. Yeah. So I moved back there, and then you know I'm I'm making pretty good money. I get, yeah, but I'm just like, uh, not happy, not happy, not. I'm miserable. I'm just like, uh, this is, yeah, you know. Doing, and then there's always when you work in corporate America, there's always like. Oh, there's layoffs coming. Oh, we're being bought by somebody. Oh, oh they're yeah. going to oh, yeah. cut the office here. Oh, we're yeah. not making the numbers and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I don't want to live 
my life with the sword over my yeah. neck the whole time. So I'm going to choose. So there you go. So how I'm can I make less money? <laughs> and how can I be in an industry that really dicta- dictates <laughs> my future? This is one thing that I've thought about. This industry tells you whether you make it or not. That's right. It, yeah. it doesn't. This is not a race that the fastest guy wins. Right. This is not the funniest person gets a movie. Right. The fun, this is just you are you are just out here going. Uh, maybe the hand of God will touch me and let me be the next Kevin Hart. That's right. That's right. And uh, and so I started at open mic nights in Cleveland. It went well. Then I started uh, emceeing, and I'd watch guys. I remember I learned a lot from like John Caponera, who's a great comic, mm-hmm. and um, Kenny Rogerson. You know Kenny? Oh yeah. These guys yeah. are so. They're not. John might be famous. He had his own show yeah. on ABC. I know Kenny Kenny, Kenny's not, but he's so good. He was good. so funny. He was really funny. He's so Naturally good. Naturally funny. Naturally funny. And he and uh, Ron White, when Ron, I, I think he was living out of his car. I don't know. I'm sorry, Ron, if you're listening. I'm pretty sure you're living out of your car. He was for a while. He was for a while. We loved him. Everybody has a Didn't great Ron Didn't he go down like, to Mexico for a while? Uh, he and Mexico, and there was some Mexico story. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, I know he carried me out of a few bars when I tried to keep up with him. But uh, it was like going out with the devil. Yeah. Ron White. It was like, I'm in Buffalo, New York. And yeah. we, the bars don't close till four in Buffalo. Right. And I'm looking around I'm like, where the hell is Ron? It's 3 30. I have to go. I have to. And I look over and he's, he had long hair, Ben. It's all like matted and sweated on his face. He looked like Jesus during yeah. the, you know, carrying, yeah. you know, he's all like, uh. I'm like, uh, this, this night's not going to end. And it didn't end. And uh, that's another story. But uh, and I would watch these guys, and I'd be like, "That's the level I want to get. I want that sound. I want to have my hair matted to my. I face. want matted my face. I want other guys. I want to girls look at to me be and... afraid of me. <laughs> but I wanted that sound from the audience that they got because yeah. they managed their acts so well. Yeah. You know, because I remember Ron White was like. You're putting all your good stuff in the front. They go, you're not follow. You can't follow yourself. Yeah, you're coming out too strong. Too strong. Yeah. He goes, you have to manage your. Yeah. You have to manage your, your act. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like a like for me. I've always thought of it as like producing an album, like a, a music Absolutely. album. Let it start. Let it build. Let it come down. Now yeah. I have a rocking song, and now I'm gonna be melodic for a middle bit, and right. now let's close this thing out. Right. You know. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what it is, and that's the hard part about doing ships. You have to, you have to dissect your act up. And I was like, oh, I just, you know. Yeah. What I try on the ships is, and, and I think you do it too. I've watched, I've watched every, every show of yours. Oh. Is that you, you do your best every time. Right. Whether, whether there's a mic problem or not. Right. You, <laughs> that's right. You, you, you do your best. <laughs> and that's sort of the same thing. I, I just think, uh, after doing as many albums and years and things, if I can't do 25 minutes of my absolute, Best right. material. Swing for the fence. You every, know what I mean? every every time. Right. Swing for on, the fence. On, on this kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these people are tired. They're you know, it's uh, what month is September? There's yeah. not a lot of young people on. You know, these people they're on medicine. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they're take, on medicine. <laughs> you know, they take you know medication. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And yeah. some of them, you know, they're older and they're tired. They've been you know, it's 110 degrees yeah. out in some of these islands and the humidity. So you have to give them that. And well, I've actually am starting to. Uh, I, it's weird because of the podcast and things that I do and social media. I have younger, younger people, younger yeah. fans. At the same time, I have the the ship people that I really like working to because yeah. there is still the same set of mind of like, yeah, that shit's wrong too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, the, that needs to change. You know what I mean? So, so I kind of right. yeah, yeah, yeah. like that at the yeah. same time. You know, yeah. like. Like I did a, a a bit last night, the night before last, sorry, that I hadn't done in probably ten, fifteen years. That I just started ranting about thing, and I'm like, it's coming back to me. Yeah, it's, it's like it's in there, and it just the, the the bit started coming back, and yeah. and they were with me, and I think I'd stopped doing it because I thought, ah, oh, these people today aren't aren't really relating to this like they used to. Yeah, but it's like, oh, you guys get it, you guys get it. Yeah, and I tell you, what, like this week, this. The, the configuration, the physical configuration of the room is bad for stand-up comedy on this ship. Right. Do you know it's, what I mean? It's, Just working the way, da- it's working a dance bar. It's working a dance bar. And, like, one half is 25 feet from you, the back wall, and the other half, it's 75 feet back. Yeah. So it's you can't yeah. hear that them 
and you know it's hard to know how you're doing. Do you know? You know what I'm saying? No, it's, you, uh, they, and then they know they yeah. know it's not set up for right. comedy. You know, but they you know that's the way they're doing it, which is fine. Yeah. It's, so it's uh, and usually you know if you're on a ship now the other ships they have a dedicated comedy room. And, you know, on, uh, can I say the name of the show? Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. The Allure, the Oasis. There's a room, and it closes off, and you can't leave till the show's over. Yeah. Nobody else can come in. Yeah. There's no well, you blender. Can leave to, you can leave to pee. You can leave to pee, you yes. Leave to, it's not yeah. like you, you come in here, you cannot. You will, you're a branch Two men come in, one <laughs> goes out. <laughs> but uh, there's no blender going off. There's no shaking of the yeah. ice, because the bar's in this room. You know, it's yeah. just, there's, <laughs> yeah. And, um... Those shows, you know, uh, every the, they're mostly all great. Yeah, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, just because the room makes it hot. Because right. the room's tight and it's right. intimate. And uh, you, you you go to a club now, and maybe you have two, three out of a whole Thursday through Saturday. Oh, you're comedy clubs, comedy Actual clubs, comedy yeah. Club, yeah. Like a Wednesday through Saturday, maybe yeah. you have a couple. Yeah. Maybe first show Saturday is really good. Right. And now it's a For, lot of them, even that they go, well, we, the Wednesday's free. We, we, Wednesday's we do it a, free. We do it a free Wednesday. I and have five you, local guys doing guest sets yeah. on Saturdays. Yeah. And then you wonder why Friday isn't doing as well. is because why would we pay on Friday yeah. if Wednesday's free? Right. Right. You know? And, uh, you know, you're doing ships. Like when I was starting out. Ships, that's where you went to die, you know, but now yes. everybody's doing ships. Yeah. Well, this is the new comedy club. It's I mean, this is comedy. the new, yeah. this is the new funny bone improv, uh, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Right. People want in because we're doing our acts. Right. It's the, we're not doing ship acts. We're doing, we're doing our, our acts. acts. Yeah. 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 And the comedy clubs, they're still doing well. You know what I mean? I yeah. know they're building and everything. But it seems like those are like YouTube Live or something like that. Or, uh, yeah. There's a lot of you, you, YouTube, yeah. YouTube guys coming in, YouTube gals. Yeah, uh, which is fine. You know, it's you know, that's what they want to market. Yeah. So you know, that's right. that's that. There was a, but these pay more. Yeah, you pay all your travel. Yeah, you know, you don't have to get up and do radio at five thirty in the morning. Yeah, there was a uh, a club that I that I stopped doing for the comics that are listening. You'll you'll probably remember this. The uh, it was the uh, oh, God, what was the name of it? it what was city? Savannah. Oh, in, in Augusta, uh, comedy, comedy house, comedy house, yes, comedy house, yes, I did those. Remember those? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and you would do. They had one in uh, uh, Columbia too. In Georgia, in uh, what's the, because of an M, the city. It's uh, Macon. Oh, make, make it. Macon oh. was there too. Yes, but they used to do so much radio. I mean, yeah. like you would do four or five stations, and then a TV show, and then we'll come back and get you at noon for for this. Yeah. And I and I finally at one point said, I'm not doing this. Right. Because I'm promoting you. You've never given me a raise. Yeah. I go no matter how many people I bring in, it's it's on you. Right. And I go. I'm tired because I'm doing all this stuff, so I'm not doing the best show that I could do. So I'm not doing this anymore. Well, if you're not That's, doing, if we're not going to promote, then you're uh, then I won't come back. I'm, I'm not doing seven radio shows on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, you know, comedy house. Are they still in business? I don't. Even I know. don't. I don't even know. I don't know. Yeah, they had one in Augusta, Georgia. Yeah, that one went out long time. Oh, did it? Yeah. Yeah, I remember the one in Savannah because Savannah is a beautiful city. I right. remember being there. And that but, club uh, was really nice too. It was, it was a very nice. Club. It was very nice. Yeah. yeah, that's the guy. Whoever owned those, if you sent Aubrey. a tape, Aubrey Pippin. Pippin. Yeah, yeah, that was it. If you sent a tape, he would charge you to look at to, your tape. To tape. Yeah. <laughs> And I remember I sent him a tape, and he, like a year went by, and I go, you know, I sent you the tape with the twenty five dollars. Uh, can I have my twenty five dollars back? He's like, uh, all right. So they, they he sent me my twenty. Did he really? I never watched the tape. <laughs> I go look, you know, you know. I'm not saying that you, uh, you know, claim this money on your taxes or anything. You know, who knows? But uh, Audrey Pippa, he was pretty nice though. I mean, oh, he he was, we he, got work. Yeah, and I, I got along with him great. For, I could for, see for he you. probably put that in just to like thin out all the, the really tapes he was company. getting. Have you, you know. ever? Did you ever watch some of the tapes that clubs got? 
Oh yeah, because uh, sometimes Long time we, ago, we'd yeah. sit down and go. It, it's a guy in his bedroom holding a cassette mic. One yeah. of those, like from a. a yeah, it'd be like there's no audience. And, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling my jokes, and you're it's like, like De Niro and uh, it, it, the comedian or yeah. whatever that was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that was that was tape sent in like that. Like people actually thought yeah. they were going to get work because yeah. they're, you know. <laughs> my thing when I was starting out, I would, I would go because back then you could go. Uh, the clubs were Tuesday through Sunday. Yeah. So you could have, you know, so I would do my, my, I left my house. My first gig was Indianapolis. Oh, my first gig was St. Louis. That was your very first? First gig. on the road. Yeah. I'm getting in my car. I'm going to drive. Do it, and Kate. I don't have another job to come back to. St. Louis. Uh, and on the way, that started on a Wednesday. So on the way, that Tuesday, I stopped in Indianapolis and I begged them for a guest set, and I got work immediately from them. So that's how that's how I did it. Yeah. And I also sent out some tapes, and that that reaped yeah. a little bit of work. But most of it comes from just driving back yeah. then. I don't know how it's done. I don't know how I would tell somebody to do it now. Yeah. But back I, then, I would just I, go and do guest sets. I think it's sort of the same way. I know a, a couple of guys, and I won't say names, but I know a couple of guys that live in their cars yeah. that just drive to gigs yeah. and do guest set. I'm here. Can I do a set? Yeah. Now can I book? Yes. We'll book you back. They actually do. They just constantly do that. Yeah. Or they go and then, hey, I'm in town and I know the comic and I stay at the condo. Yeah. They all play golf together. And next thing, he's a buddy of the club. Not, doesn't know the act, but now he's yeah. a buddy of the club owner because they all play golf. Oh, now he's getting a booking. Yeah. So there's this whole, it's not about yeah. your act a lot of But now the clubs know? are like Thursday through Saturday, so it's hard to... Like in the old days, you had Funny Bones, you do Davenport Tuesday through Sunday, Yeah. drive to Des Moines, Yeah. stay in the condo, because there's a condo, yeah. those guys are out Monday, you're there Monday, you start Tuesday, Yeah. but now I don't know what, I don't know how people do it now. No. It's so hard. I, I don't, don't know, know, I don't know if, because I, I didn't drive when... Oh, you did No, yeah. I started early enough that clubs were paying airfare, yeah. and you've got a car. I mean, I don't yeah. know if you've heard those stories, they're oh, true. Oh, yeah, the old... You got, there was a car. Myths. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so then I talk to these guys, and I see them. I've worked with them. They're like, oh, I'm leaving after the late night show because I've got to drive to Pennsylvania because i got to be, yeah. you know, like, you're dr- that'd kill me. I'd be like, I'm done. This is not what I signed up for. Yeah. That's hard. I yeah. did. That's what I did. Why would you want to be tired and not happy? And You know, if you get to town a day early and you're like, woohoo. Well, back then, yeah. you're like, where's the I, party? I where's the party? That's, that was my, you know, I'd get into town and be like, let's go, wait staff, let's go out, let's drink, let's have fun. Yeah. You know, but now I'm old and married. Yeah. You know, now it's like, uh, kids. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> well, well, one of the things I'm sure you may have heard this, I hear it, is like, one of the things we like about you is you are, are dependable. Because we know, yes. you, you, we know, even if you're not here when the show starts, yeah, you're go, you're coming, right? You, you're not hungover, right? You're 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 not out right. partying somewhere. We're not going to have to send somebody out looking for you. That's right. We're not, go, you know. Yeah, I know guys that have disappeared or just didn't show up, but somehow they get they get, get rebooked. rebooked. Yeah, I always found that amazing. Yeah, are the stories about the guys would be like, can I get an advance? <laughs> oh, because yeah. I blew all my money on coke last week. Yeah, I, I, I know. Money uh, to get there. <laughs> I remember uh, there was one. I'm not going to say his name. He is departed. Yeah, he's no People, longer with us. But there's comics that are listening. And uh, and um, I worked with him in Little Rock, Arkansas. I think at Stanford's Comedy House or yeah. something like that. Very yeah. nice guy. Jeff, I think, ran that. Yeah, very nice guy. And he stayed at. I don't know if it was his house, but it was a house, and it had a hot tub, which may not have been clean for a long time. <laughs> It would really smell like heavy chlorine. Oh, just like, added chlorine. Oh, just, just added, added chlorine. <laughs> Water was never changed. Just like just a gallon of bleach. Chlorine. Added. Yeah, it was like dimly lit. Like none of the lights really illuminated anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was just. Uh, and I worked with this guy, and he was headlining. I think I was, I was featuring, and Mark Gross, who was a great comic and a great writer, uh-huh. and he wrote for Mike and Molly. And now he's writing for Man with a Plan. And he's working on something else with CBS. He was emceeing because he had nothing else to do. Okay. And this headliner immediately asked us for money because he had no money. And then uh, we were like, well, we don't have any. You know, we're just we're kids. We're- yeah, we don't have any money, you know. Yeah. And I go, I go, why don't you get an advance from so-and-so? He's like, well, I've 
I already he already advanced me the money a couple of months ago. He's he would call ahead that far ahead. Hey, can you pay me now for when I come? And I gotta buy my airplane ticket, and I gotta. I gotta pay for you know. And I guess he hadn't paid taxes in twenty years. Or something. <laughs> uh, the life of a comic. Now, did you did you know you w- always wanted to do comedy? I always wanted to be. You did always. I always. This is gonna sound corny. I always wanted to be Bob Hope. I just, I wanted my own Christmas special. That's all I ever wanted. You wanted your own Christmas special. I wanted special. my own Christmas How? special. Now, why haven't you done that? I don't know. Seriously, I why just... haven't you done one show as Dan Greeter's... Very Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yes. I don't know. I'd love to do it. I just, I loved, looking back on old-time TV as a kid, oh, watching that me stuff. Me too. Just those Christmas specials. So they tell a few jokes, and I'll bring up my guest. Now yeah. we're going to sing, it's very jolly Christmas. All, here's John and Davidson, you know, yeah. my special guest, John Davidson. Yeah. <sighs> and, Bing Cros- and, and Bing Crosby had great yeah. Christmas specials. Yeah. And I just wanted John Denver Christmas specials. John were Denver, were the they were awesome. And then uh, right after 9-11, I remember I was at LAX. This is like three weeks. It's my first trip after 9-11. Yeah. And... Uh, what, something happened to a metal detector, so everybody had to get out. Everybody had to leave the airport. Oh. We're all standing outside, and there was an older gentleman leaning on a cane in uh-huh. front of me. And I was like, sir, if you would like to go sit down, I will hold your you place in line. You don't have to sit. Yeah. I, you know, uh, you can wait till I'm at the ticket counter again. To come. He goes, no, no, it does me good. So I start talking to him. He did all the set construction for all those Bing Crosby <gasps> Christmas specials. You could have that guy help you out with your Christmas special. He's dead. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but it gave you the hope of wanting to do it and again. And he was on his way to the Ford Theater in Washington for some award show or something. But I go, oh, God, you know, I just love, love. I go, what was it like? He yeah. goes, well, we shot him in August. And Bing would work till 1 o'clock, and then he would go golf. So if you weren't done... And there was no like going over one o'clock. Yeah. It was either one o'clock and I'm out. Uh, see you later, everybody. I'm off to the course, you know. <laughs> he goes, that was it. He goes, but they were great and they were fun. And it was hot because everybody was yeah. bundled up. Bundled for, up winter coats. For New England winter. Fake, fake soap flakes fake, coming down on Wouldn't that be great to have a Christmas special? Wouldn't it? That's all I ever wanted. Why don't you? I wanted see- to be famous enough. To, and I'm not even famous, so I'm never going to have a Christmas special. But you could do it anyway. You could do your one, your one shoot. Just one off. Just, just call it. Just have, find a club that's going find to put club, together. Do it, shoot it as, an, like your DVD. Make it yeah. a, it, it still do your act or whatever you want to do. It was still Dan Greeter Christmas with, you know. I could like run out a little theater in Hollywood. Yeah. And make it like a, uh. Get a couple of comics. Like a parody singer, of a. A parody. Uh, do a, produce yeah. a parody show of a Christmas. Right, and, and you can watch that any time if it's done right. I, That's right. I watched even in this room. I watched part of a John Denver Christmas special this week. Did you really? Yeah, because I was. You know, you know how you go down the uh, you, YouTube rabbit hole. You watch. Was video. it John Denver and the Rocky Mountains? Yes. Oh yeah, that's classic. One of the best. That's isn't classic. It? Yeah. Because I'm a big Olivia John... Newton John. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. See, so you ought to think. <laughs> you ought to think about that shooting just a one off, producing a one. It's maybe even think about doing it at Christmas time. That might be your, you know, yeah. Like people look for, right. looking for something to do. Andy Williams just oh, the Andy Williams, the king oh, of yeah. Christmas. He used to take his Christmas special on the road. Yeah, when the, after they stopped televising it, yeah. he would just take it around the theaters. Yeah, and the Oak Ridge like Boys do a Christmas show. Do they? They do. They start at the end, like around November, and they yeah. do like full Christmas. Show with all the sets and the rocking chairs and Christmas trees and oh, that's they, they awesome. do a traveling yeah, Christmas ship. Yeah, God, it's a good idea. Yeah, maybe think, not for this year. I can't put together for that for this year. But maybe but, next but think year. about it. down the road. Yeah. You can have like a you know your fake tree and the, oh some, you know kids f- running around with the a fake living room and fake the, living room set. Right. And Children. And, like, remember Andy Williams always did that. Andy I could, had his real family. Yes, his mom and dad were always that's there right. And, that's right. But I could cast a better looking family for myself. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if my wife would appreciate that. But she hears this. What do you mean by better looking family? <laughs> Just, you know, a little more receptive children and uh, maybe a, a swimsuit ones that model listen wife. To me. Yes, and a swimsuit ones model wife pre- who sings one, very nicely. Well, and one, a kid that appreciates <laughs> the gift. <laughs> That's 
This isn't what I asked for. <laughs> yeah, I always wanted to have a Christmas special. That's that was, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think, did, I don't know if you've ever seen it, and I don't want to admit to this uh, publicly, but I'm about to. And I only did it because of YouTube. I'm a big YouTube fan. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, they're, uh, remember the show Glee? I never saw it, but I do remember it being on. I didn't really watch it either. Yeah. But because of YouTube, there was a, I saw, they did an episode dedicated to Christmas. Yeah. And it was them, it wasn't really like a show as much as it was just, you know, because it was a musical show anyway, yeah. of them singing in the living room and looking out the window and singing to, you know, yeah. baby, it's cold out. So it's the same kind yeah. of, you could have just these sets of right. different, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Carpenters, they had a great Christmas special. Mm -hmm. Everybody did. Yeah. Well, a lot of entertainers, even now, put out Christmas albums. That's true. Yeah. Whether they're good or not. Yeah, that's so true. I'm recording my Christmas album. I love Christmas. I love Christmas. I love snow. That's the thing about living in L.A. is You, you get, get no, up. You get no snow. First of all, your tree dries out. Yeah, we buy our tree like four days before Christmas. So it stays green? So it stays green. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be on fire by the time you get it home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. It's just like everything just dries out. Like even Halloween, you can't carve your pumpkin till Halloween morning. So it doesn't you turn it out, mush. it's gonna just gelatinous. Yeah. Mess. Yeah. Last Halloween was the first Halloween. I, I bought one of those uh, ring doorbells. You know, the, the have you seen it on TV mm -hmm. where you can see the video? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You get the video and you can, you know, <laughs> get off my lawn. You know, that kind of. So. Um, so I, I did it work. I have one of those. Yes, yeah, so and uh, oh, and I was going to give out candy. You know, I told told my wife to you know go with the neighbors and the kids yeah. and all. The, just y'all go out and have fun, and I'll give out candy. She goes, "We have the doorbell. Just put it out. Put out the bowl, and yeah. let's go with us." Yeah. So I had my ring on my phone, and it would say motion, and I'd look at it, and I go, "Take one piece." <laughs> and the kids are like, look around on the porch. <laughs> and I kill them be like, I saw that. Put those back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. okay. You know what I used to do? I had a gorilla mask, like a full head gorilla mask. Uh -huh. And I'd get a big, uh, like, sweatpants and sweatsuit. And I'd stuff myself with newspaper. Then I would, like, lean lean back on a chair. Like you were a fake gorilla? Like I was a fake gorilla. Then had the bowl yeah. next to me. And with a sign that says, please just take one. Yeah. And I had the, and I was really good at like not moving. Yeah. And then the kids would come up, and I could gauge the kid. I could see them. Yeah. So if it was a little tiny kid, You're I wouldn't jump and scare. Them. You know. Yeah. But if it was a, some smart ass yeah. teenager, then yeah. I would go out, and then he would scream. Yeah. <laughs> that was my favorite. I love doing that. I always think Halloween is great right at dusk. Right at dusk, when the parents bring out the little bitty ones. Yeah. The little, you know, they're right. baby able to walk and they're in a bumblebee costume. Yeah. Or the, you know, or they're like, come on up, come on up. Yeah. That's that's cute. And then it turns into the kids in costumes. Yeah. And then about 930, when you forget to turn the, off your light. Here come the 16-year-olds. Yeah. 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 Trick or treat. <laughs> what, what are you? I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, the joy of just watching uh, my kids get it. Yeah. Like the first time we took them out and they were able to walk. I mean, we had them in the stroller. For, right. But the first time they... That they were actually going. They run up to the door. Go to the next go one. Go on. Go. Go. Go to the next one. Go. Go. Yeah. Get up there. And so uh, my son, uh, he was Spider-Man. He had a the plastic pumpkin with the handle. So at the end of the night, he would, people would come up and he'd be like, he goes, put candy in my pumpkin. <laughs> That's what he would say. That's what he was saying. No trick or treat. No trick. Just feet. put candy in my pumpkin. <laughs> well, well, this will fit into the theme of the podcast, remasculate and how things got bad. But I have seen and heard kids play out on Halloween. Like, I'm done. I'm tired. We've only been like four blocks. Let me tell you something. We went, my dad had to come get me. Come find me. Come find me. We were out till midnight. My parents let us stay out. Yeah. Till midnight. Yeah, we would go to other... We'd finish our neighborhood, then get on our bikes, and go to yeah. another neighborhood. Yeah. And I, you know... No, but I we went with a group of parents last year, and this one kid, he was done, and his mom had to carry his bag of candy. Yeah. And by the Pussy. end, she's carrying him. This kid's 10. Yeah, and you're carrying the kid and the candy because I'm just tired. Yeah. I'm tired. It's not that much fun. What do you mean it's not fun? Yeah. It's 
It's yeah. Halloween. And that goes back. Look what we've done to our kids. Yeah, well, some like, people. Some people have done that to their kids. Yeah, I know, but a lot have. I think that's why we have. And I, I, I argue with people on Twitter and Facebook about this a lot because they, they, I get that. Some people have. Yes, most people have, or we wouldn't have this generational problem of colleges going, we need a safe space. We yeah. can't hear words. I'm, There's a lot more than just, well, a few have. Let me tell you something. Ohio State, my freshman orientation, we had to go in the summer for orientation. Okay? So orientation, it's an overnight thing. They show you the campus, how to get around, yeah. how to buy stuff. <clears throat> Bunch of college kids all over the state, all over the country, really. They're like, okay, uh, tonight we're going to show a movie in the theater. Blazing Saddles was the movie they showed. Do you think in this day and age, anybody would show Blazing unedited, unedited? This is before because uh, it was just a comedy. It was just a comedy. Just a comedy. Everyone laughed their asses off. Yeah. Everyone had a great yeah. time. Do you do you know how offensive that would be yeah. to some of these college kids? Oh. Blazing Saddles. Yeah. Written by Richard Pryor. Yeah. Written by. Uh, yeah. Richard Pryor was supposed to have starred in it, but he couldn't do it. That's why Cleavon Little was. That's right. Yeah, he doing kept disappearing it. or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it was a hysterical movie. It was a beautiful movie. Yeah. How do you not watch that over and over again? Yeah. And not laugh? the sheriff isn't. <laughs> yeah. The sh- oh dang rabbit! <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes if somebody heckles me, I they're like, hey, is that the guy from Blazing Saddles? <laughs> But uh, that would never go. On. No, that would never. And go half on the today. half the TV shows that we grew up on couldn't get made today. That's true. And that's why more than half the TV suck ass today. Yeah. If you watch shows, they're horrible. I mean, they're absolutely. My my wife will watch a show and she goes, "Oh, I like that one." I go, "It won't. It won't be last three weeks." Why do you say that? It's poorly written. The characters are all exactly the same. Because uh, you now you have to have a rainbow club of people. You have to have oh. You know, a white guy, a black guy, a chubby guy. Uh, uh, you need to have your gay guy, and you need to have your. It, that has to be part of the cast. Well, it's not like that in real life. No, it's not no. like that. It's not like that in real life. It's. Uh, I liked uh, like Frasier was a great sitcom. It was well written. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now it seems like uh, the problem I have with sitcoms is, uh, and Grant, I would love to write for a sitcom, but uh, everyone, everyone's funny. Right. It's not that way. Everyone. Has something funny to say. Yeah. Everyone can pull remote references out of the air. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They all it's... talk like Twitter. Yeah. They all talk in these one line jokes instead of actual yeah. di- dialogue. Yeah, like everyone's funny. Yeah. But the, but then the jokes aren't funny because they can't have a mean twist <clears throat> to them. Right. See, because I always tell people comedy has a victim. That's yes. one of the things about comedy. Comedy yeah. is not meant to be cute and funny right. all, all the time. Because right. you are making fun. <gasps> are you making fun of that? Right. Yes, I am. Right. You yeah, know. comedy is, uh, yeah, you can't go to a show and be offended. I don't, you know, we're not running for mayor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And when comedians say stuff, like, um, who's the girl that did the uh, the uh, correspondence did? Michelle Wolf. Michelle Wolf, whose okay. show's already been canceled because she was horrible. Oh, it was it it's on Netflix? Yeah, it didn't even make it. A Everyone's giving her trouble. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You can't blame the snake for biting. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what that's what she is. Yeah. My problem, and you know, power to her. That's that's her thing. Right. Do you know what I mean? That's uh, that's the mouse trap. Okay. You, you can't you blame the, there. You said those can't, things, and you now you have to deal with what you. No, my problem is the people, the correspondence people who hired her are like, yeah. oh, we didn't know that she was going to go that far. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Of we, course you did. Yeah. That's why you hired her. Yeah. And, and now you got called on and it. And usually everything like that has to have stuff approved. Yeah. You, you turn in. Right. It's not one person a- like, Janice, do you know somebody who can do some stand-up at the correspondence? Yeah, we just need somebody. Yeah, what, uh, who's the girl headlining? Let's get, I haven't just seen her. but the club. You know I- exactly what she did. You can't blame Michelle Wolf for doing what she does. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's what she does. But see what bugs me about the hypocrisy of things like that is because she was making fun of Sarah Sanders. Yes. Making fun of her weight, her looks. But the whole thing about the left is don't make fun of people. Don't, you know, your sisters. You're you're being... 
that's what I don't like. Yeah. At least if, if I'm going to go, hey, you know what? I'll make fun of fucking everybody. Right. I don't care. Make fun of everybody. Everybody. Yeah. And then I'm an equal opportunity offender. Right. But I'm not trying to act like I'm better than you. Like, I would never make fat jokes. And then you go on stage and make a fat joke. You see what I'm saying? Right, yeah. The left is so into You shouldn't make fun of anybody. Uh, everybody. If you're, that's sexist. We should all make fun of each other. That's, that's my theory. Me too. Make fun, of, make fun of everybody. Make fun of everybody. We all, and you used to be able to. Yeah. We all could take a joke. Right. We, everybody could. Now you can't take a joke. Yeah. What's well, the old thing? Like, you know, it's not a dick. Don't take it so hard. You know, it's a joke. Yeah. You know. And I think, uh, so her show got canceled yeah. on that. So I think maybe what she fell into is like, now I have to do something else to get, she can't just be funny. Now everything has to be a message or maybe yeah. everything has to be, that's tough to, uh, that's tough to climb that every day. Like Kathy that's Griffin. a lot of like water. Kathy Griffin. Yeah, it's a lot of water to carry. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Can Kathy Griffin just do a regular stand-up set Just now? come out and be like, hey. No, you now it's got to be, you know, F flute. Trump or yeah. this or here's a bloody mask I'm going to hold up or whatever. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. I've watched her stand up. I've laughed. You know what I mean? All the but way through? Not Well, I haven't watched it all the okay. way through. Oh, there we go. And, uh, you know, but she is not untalented. Do you know what I mean? But now it's like, uh, now I have to do this and this. Yeah. I have to keep upping right. the thing. You know what I right. mean? It's just right. like, you know, I remember I watched uh, years ago. Oh my, I was in training with my sales job and in White Plains, New York, and I went down to the city. I saw Joy Behar at Catch a Rising Star. And I wasn't, I don't think I was even doing stand up yet. I was interested in it. Yeah. And it was her and um, Louis Black and a bunch of other people because they don't really have three person shows there. They, like everybody. Yeah. So, but he was ever around. Drop First of all, I remember thinking, boy, these people are old and they're still like doing like a Wednesday night open mic. That's what I was thinking. Really? Because I was naive. You yeah. know, I didn't know who they I didn't, were. You know, most people don't even know this about Joy, but she's like in her 70s. Yeah. So she was in her 50s yeah. back then. And she did a joke about, you know, I met this guy. He said he worked for CBS, so I blew him. But turns out he worked for CVS. Like, that was her joke. Yeah. You know, I, I she did it much better right. than I'm doing now. That, yeah. But, that was it. But the twist was the twist one was, letter off. Yeah. 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 But yeah. now it's like, you know, she's on The View, and she's had a great run on The View, I guess, whatever. But now every time they show her, she's like... Just mean. She just, yeah. She's like, you know, does everybody have to be a scold? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Can't we just, you know, well, just be fun. Let's be funny again. Well, the other thing is, is now people have doubled down so hard on hating Trump. They, yeah. That they can't let go of it. They can't go. All right, maybe we are. Maybe the economy is a little better. Yeah. Oh, minority minority unemployment is the lowest it's ever been. That's a good thing. That's a great thing. So why not give into? No, he's a racist. What? How is he a racist when minority underemployment? Well, didn't you hear the thing he said about Mex? Yeah, he said we're not getting all the best and the brightest. You know, it's like they they take these snippets and they hold on to them, and, yeah. and then they can't let it go. They can't go. Well, all right. Well, maybe maybe I'll yeah. Okay, I'll give you that one. It's like no, no. Yeah, my main thing is the econ. Let's get the economy going. That helps everybody, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, helps us. More people on cruise ships or in the clubs or whatever. It yeah. helps whoever, yeah, you know, I don't understand the big, uh, you know, that I like was, everybody. I like everybody. Everybody. Everybody laughs well, at the same stuff. I, I've said this on here before. I, I like everybody until you prove to me I shouldn't. Yes. You know, like you do something wrong to me or right. you say something, you know, to, or derogative to me or my family or whatever, you're you're out. But I don't judge you just because of of... I don't know you. you know, yeah, I, you know, I give everybody. Hey, hey, do it like the, you know everybody on these ships. They're all and I don't different places talk and about and politics at all in my act. I don't either. I yeah, look at it. I'm all. here to be. Dis- God put me here to be a distraction. Yes, and that's what I'm yeah, going. They to came be. here to laugh because their their lives have been maybe crap all day. Yeah, know? maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't. You Not know. on cruise ships, but <laughs> but so many of these shows now. It's just like I can't watch late night television. No. Do you know what I mean? No. I can't, and it's, it it's breaks all, my heart. It's all bad. I can't. It's all stupid. I can't end my day like that with that negative. That's what you want to go to bed with. With the last thing, I can't end like, my. Oh, day the like dregs that. of society. And Stephen Colbert can be very funny. He can be very funny. He can. Yes, he can. I've I've laughed so loud, but I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear anything about Trump or Again, whoever tonight. else. Again. Again, it's been all day. You know, no, no pe- people can't relate to. Uh, us talking about Johnny Carson anymore because 
A lot of a lot of people have no memory. If if he's gone That's in ni- ninety three, That's a long most, time ago. Most of them don't know. Yeah. But he was the best. He was the best. And if you go watch old Johnny Carson shows, they yeah. were they were equally uh, uh, making fun of both, making fun of making fun of Ford and making fun and right. then saying what well, good job he did on this. And then again, the guests didn't all come out and do that. They were, you know, right. they would joke about tell stories about, "Hey, weren't you just in Monte Carlo?" "Oh, yeah, the greatest thing happened to me there." Yeah. It wasn't about, "So what's your opinion on uh, Kavanaugh?" Who cares what your opinion is? You know what I mean? It's just like, be entertain. You're an entertainer. Be entertaining. Yeah, it used to be just late yeah. night entertainment. Yeah. Now it's just uh, man. When Bruce, Re- uh, Bruce, when Burt Reynolds and, and Johnny Carson used to oh, get yeah. together, you would l- roll on the floor laughing. Don Rickles would be on there. It'd be yeah, awesome. It yeah. was like, and it wasn't as manic. It was just, it was like watching a baseball game. Yeah. You know, like a lot, lot of low periods. Yeah, they're just like, talk, oh, what, the, what was oh, that? Oh, get, what did? Yeah. What happened? You know yeah. what I mean? So you had now everything's like boom, 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 because yeah. they the Nielsens they track every minute of the show. And uh, well, that's one reason I don't care much for the Jimmy Fallon show is that I I don't really like the stupid games. You know, like hey, you have a new movie out? All right, let's play basketball with our heads. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you got a new album out. I hear it's doing really good. Let's throw water balloons at each other. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know. You're trying to get eyeballs. You know, it's hard, man. It's like there's more but than three channels. But if you were actually an entertainer, you're good at what you did. You wouldn't have to like. Now let's watch that water balloon hit Julia Roberts in the face in slow motion. <laughs> He has fun stuff on there, though. I saw uh, Will Ferrell came on once dressed as Little Debbie. I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> I, never, I probably watched that a million times in a row. It's hilarious. All right, that you was know? pretty good. Yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. Well, that, maybe that's just Will Ferrell, though. True. Maybe Jimmy was like, hey, we're going to throw cupcakes at each other. Well, it's like, no, I have this whole uh, yeah. bit I've written now. We're going to yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, well, then I'll throw, I'll throw Little Debbies at you. <laughs> you come out as Little Debbies. Now, what do you think about him canceling Norm MacDonald? Um... I think it I thought was that a pussy was, move. I thought that was weak. Yeah. I thought that was weak. Did you read the article? He made some of the senior staff members cry. Really? Yeah. That when they heard what he had he had yeah. written about, it made some of the senior staff members cry. What? Because he, he said, that's not the Roseanne I know. He, yeah. He kind of took up for, you know. Yeah. Oh, my God. Me too. Hashtag me too. <laughs> But you bring him on the show. Yeah, and then you know, discuss it. Hey, and discuss it. Yeah. Wait, all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you made my head writer cry. We're going to bring her we'll out. Bring her head, you know. Maybe you can apologize Pied to her. her. Nah, I'll, th- I'll hit her in the face with a balloon, though. Hugh Grant got a hooker, and Leno brought him on, and he was never... Never off, even asked about it. Never even... He didn't know. <laughs> well, he asked him about I it. Know, I know. You know, but he brought him on, and Leno was uh, top of the ratings for the rest of his tenure yeah, at NBC. Yeah. Once he brought him... Because people wanted to know the, know the story. Yeah, what yeah. was that about? Why would you not bring Foxy somebody Brown on? Foxy Brown or whatever. Oh, remember, she, she kind of got famous for a little bit. Yeah, they had her do commercials. Yeah. For uh, AIDS. <laughs> The uh, diet candy. the diet gum back before back before it was the bad <laughs> word. Having a product called AIDS. Yeah, don't you remember that? Yeah, it was, it was a AYD. A Y D S. Yeah, <laughs> and it was a diet. Yeah, supplement. I lost weight with AIDS. <laughs> we're not laughing at people suffering from no. We're, AIDS, uh, we're uh, saying how things get confused yes. over over the years, <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> try the new Buick Cancer. And like, oh no, there's there's actually a disease now called cancer. What? What? We were talking oh, we had about all this the, marketing. We were, we were talking about the, the zodiac sign. <laughs> oh, be, oh my god! I'll never forget that. Like, oh my god, they're naming this after a product that's being sold on television. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? I remember. It's this like, is, uh, oh, I can't. I'm gonna die soon. I have smokeless ashtray. Yeah. Because <laughs> they only sold AIDS on television, yeah. right? Well, I remember. <laughs> I remember making ashtrays for my parents. That's how oh, my, that's smoking right. was accepted. We would be in school. And making ashtrays. My you high see? school had a smoking section. Did it really? Yes. And it was like, okay, you guys. It was outside the back door on the steps on this hill. It was a Catholic school, and you could go out there. Go and smoke. back there and do then it. Then they're like, okay, well, 
just the upperclassmen now. <laughs> and now it'd be, you'd be on CNN. Like this school in Ohio is allowing kids to smoke cigarettes. Yeah, the smoking circle. <laughs> Can you imagine having a smoking section? It would make the news. I'm not kidding. It would make yeah, the news. Yeah, we've allowed, we've decided to let kids. Yeah, we're going to let them smoke. They're going to let them shoot now. It'd be, we're going to decide to let them shoot up heroin, but only in this marked off area right here. <laughs> oh, those poor AIDS people. I'd like to talk to the guy that owned that company. company. What did you think when that went down? Oh, I don't know. I had everything in there. Yeah, I, I, I had reinvested a, a third mortgage on my house to because we were expanding into other we were, countries. Sales were so big. We were big. about to go into Africa. And, uh, I had a factory in Haiti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We're going to hell. <laughs> but it's like, uh, how terrible. I know. I know. <laughs> there has to be an AIDS commercial on there, oh, YouTube. No, there is. A, there is. There, are, there is on YouTube. Oh, is there? there oh. I've seen it. I've seen it on YouTube. So we're not imagining that no, was a real no. product for you guys <laughs> that are getting butt hurt or think we're like, go look up AIDS diet A Y D S. There's AIDS. a whole. There's a whole commercial about. Was it a diet you look gum? Great. Thanks. You look great. Yeah, I'm on AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret, Debbie? Here it is. <laughs> Get this. And it was like a gum. It looked like a... It was like a chocolate. Yes. It was a chocolate. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. What was it, I wonder? It was probably speed, you know, <laughs> those days speed. back then. You know? With a crunchy middle of just yeah. a quaalude. Yeah. <laughs> just, it was yeah. Just... yeah, you burn it off until you pass out, you know. <laughs> I think we found the name uh, of the podcast for the week. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it was it was sold on TV. On it's TV. a big commercials. So oh, you was, used to, well, we used to watch the game show as a kid. Game all, shows, game the shows, shows, or the UHF channel. Yeah, right? all day yeah. long was or game VHF. shows. Well, which one was the bad one? VHF. VHF. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, VHF. Yeah, yeah. yeah, whatever your cartoons are Yeah, whatever you on. had to go to the second knob yeah. for. That's yeah. what it was on, AIDS, yeah. yeah. With the but, pocket fisherman. Yeah. yeah. Pope Peel's pocket fisherman. You know. It dices, it slices, it's... Yeah, but do you remember uh, watching get game shows when you were a kid and always thinking, you know, they'd go at the very end and there was like, suits by such a... Dicker and Dicker, Beverly Hills. Remember they, always, remember they would always... And I used to think, I want one of those suits one day. Dicker and Dicker. I, I can't wait to go... Those. Yeah. Are they still in Beverly Hills, I don't Dicker and know. Dicker? There was a couple of suit things. It was yeah. A, uh, Dicker and Dicker was one of them. Yeah. Uh, I think Fred Meyer, Fred something, it was a Fred. Yes. Was one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was another one that was like Bellini or something. Suits by, you yeah. know, one of like an Italian name. And I used to watch the end of those game shows and think, oh, I want to be so famous. I get one of those Dicker and Dicker. Hollywood suits. Dicker and Dicker, Beverly Hills. Yeah. And they would always win trips to Puerto Vallarta. Yeah. Oh, what's that place? And then now I've been there. I'm like, ooh, ooh really? Uh, maybe they uh, did. They get home okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you feel that? I felt that way about when I a weekend in beautiful Acapulco. <laughs> and now they're like, "Don't go. Don't go to Acapulco. Nobody goes to Acapulco." It's apparently the murder capital of. Do like, any of the ships stop there anymore? I don't think they do. I mean, I don't. I think I'm on one do. that's. I think I'm on one that stops there. But there be people walking the beach and they're like, oh, "There's your body washed up." I, I I remember watching those Elvis movies, Fun and Acapulco, oh, yeah. and I'd be like, "Oh, I want to go <laughs> the cliff diving and the food and the where is that? Where is that?" <laughs> and now you watch the news, you're like, 14 oh. bodies were found in the street outside." Oh. Of, there were ten heads found in a bag. Yeah, at the airport in Acapulco. Well, I was telling my, my my brother is a big go to to Mexico vacation guy. Really? Yeah. He all oh, we got dive and is he a diver? No, or no? He just like he gets a, they get a great deal if they go stay at Playa, yeah. Playa de Karma or whatever. Yeah. Then like, and I go go <laughs> go to Hawaii. Go to go to you know. And so the last time he goes down, he he was complaining. He goes. Bunch of people we went with didn't want to leave the resort. They said it wasn't safe. It's not safe. And I go, it's not. He goes, oh, it's safe enough. There's people that walk those streets. And they, he go, I go, it's not safe. <laughs> you know, I hunt a lot. Yeah. Bird, big bird hunter. Yeah. And this guy, a buddy of mine from L.A. I hunt with, uh, he owns property 
south of the Salton Sea in Cali, past Cali, Mexico, into uh-huh. Mexico. I don't know. I don't know what part of Mexico it is. Right. But it's not the beach part. It's right. It's like central. It's just south of Palm Springs as you go into Mexico. Yeah, just right there. He's like, yeah, we uh, we got some property there. We should go down there and hunt. I go, I'm never going hunting in Mexico. No. You got to be kidding me. As soon as I step over the line, I could be involved. That's right. In some, some guys will roll up with a pickup truck with their AK-47s and we're, we disappear. Yeah. Like the two people that remember the uh, the jet ski people that went across the lake and happened yes. to be on the wrong side when a drug deal was going down. Who's going to come to help you? Because uh, people don't realize how desolate that area. Have you ever been down there in no. the Salton Sea? No, I've heard about in California. There was a movie about it. You know. About the Salton Sea? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, I don't uh, think it was about it, but it was called oh. the Salton Sea. I mean, there's nothing there as, as far as the eye could see. And if you cross into Mexico, nobody's going to come help you. What, I'm going to fight off a gang with my 12 gauge? I have to wait to <laughs> get real close. shot. Back off. Hey, what's well, number eight in their face? <laughs> <laughs> I go, he keeps trying to tell me how great. I'm sure the hunting's great. That Probably night. is because nobody does it. Because nobody, <laughs> nobody does it. They're, the birds are overstocked. <laughs> They're just in the trees. The birds night. are like, please, somebody, somebody come fin us out. Fin us out. I'd like some food <laughs> this season. <laughs> well, I'm like, there's no way in hell I'm going down there. And then when even when I get off in, uh, like, uh, Cabo, there's been warnings. Oh, yeah. About going to Cabo. And they're like, well, you have to go... Uh, in the resort, stay in the area, stay in the Yeah, area. you're going to fly into Cabo, Dan, and then you're going to take a cab, find a cab, and uh, go down to... It's an hour cab ride yeah. from the airport to Cabo San Lucas. Right. You and know. you hope you... And you hear about people just being stopped on the highway yeah. and being taken, taken hostage. Because they're, they're tourists. They're, they're tourists. They know you got money. You know, you got yeah. things. And so, or yeah. just random cars being stopped. Yeah. I'm like, oh, is, it, is this really worth the... But they always assure me it's safe. I've never had any trouble. I've yeah. never had any trouble. I've never had any trouble either. But I don't yeah. I don't take the chances. I'm not going to no. do it. I'm not going to... You know, I was with... Uh, <laughs> I was with another comic on one of the ships. And we, we were in um, uh, Cozumel. You know, yeah. and, you, and you, you, there's two places to dock. One's one's away, yes. and one's you yeah. know. And he's like, "Let's just walk into town." And I'm like, "No, I no." <laughs> you beat me to it. I'm like, "No, <laughs> I'm not walking no into town." No, no. There's stuff right here. If we don't want to eat here, I'll eat on the ship. But there's, I'm not walking. What you see on the surface, the touristy stuff, and then there's a big drop. It's like being on in the ocean. There's a nice surf you can walk in, uh-huh. then there's a, there's then a big there's a drop, drop off. off. And there's there a, might be a shark, right? There at might the be a shark, a stingray, stingray, who knows? Uh, sea urchin, yeah, who knows? With the spines. Yes. Yeah. There's a big drop off. So you stay, you know, I always tell people don't rent anything with a motor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It looks fun to drive around in a Jeep and yeah, Cosimo. You're halfway around the island and. You know, and yeah. then you're in an accident. Yeah. And now you're held up. Yeah. Because you hurt somebody with the Jeep. Right. Now you're not getting back on the ship. And now you're not getting back on the ship. Don't rent a scooter. You know, it, I was, <clears throat> this is so funny. Well, it's not funny, but I was in uh, Bermuda. And there, have you ever caught, caught a ship in Bermuda? It's literally an hour and a half cab ride yeah, from no, I, the I, airport. Yeah, no, I, I just, just did it. My very, my very first cause time. Because the roads are 18th century roads. Yeah. And they cur, wind like yes. crazy. So I'm in there, and the cab driver's super nice. And we're passing these tourists on scooters. And I'm like, oh, you should never rent a scooter. He goes, no, man, you never rent a, never rent a scooter. And then we just see this woman come around the corner on a scooter and just lose it. You saw, saw her? Yeah, she just went. <laughs> and just like her left side, her right side got shredded. But no helmet. Yeah. You know, a rented scooter. Now you have to pay for the scooter. Yeah, now you've messed up that. You probably didn't take out the insurance because you're like, no, mine covers it. Mine, I've got... Not in Bermuda, baby. And the, the credit card that I use has, uh, it's covered. Yeah, never rent a scooter. Well, I always rent a scooter, always, in Hawaii. When I go... Right, I it's go to part Hawaii, of America. Yeah. It's part of America. <laughs> Nobody's going to protect you in Mexico. You know what I mean? You don't want to get hurt and end up yeah. in a hospital down there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, I did that Bermuda. I was there two, two, two weeks ago. And, uh, you know, I flew, in, you flew, I flew into the airport and the hotel was still, uh, a $40 cab ride. More than that. Well, to where I was. was oh, $40. oh, to the hotel. The hotel was a yeah. $40 cab yeah, yeah, ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I'm, and, I, and the guy that picked me up, because the same guy goes, you need to go to the ship market? Yeah, he goes, I'll meet you back here at noon. And I'm right. Like, oh, okay. All right, yeah. fine. And I, he goes, we have to go back toward the airport. I go, oh, okay. I go, well, that's weird that we went this far. Yeah. Yeah. So they went for, you from you went from the airport into town. Into town. Now, you're, nice now you have to go all the way yeah, back down. $70. Yeah. It was a $70 cab ride yeah. to, the, to the ship. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I don't know. I Did guess. you have it? Yeah, I had it. Yeah. Well, no, I ha- I asked my cab driver to stop at an ATM. Oh, okay. So I could get yeah. Bahamian, uh, uh, not Bahamian, what do you call it? Uh, Bermudian, Bermudian, Bermudian money. Yeah. So, and uh, he goes, yeah. well, we take American cash here too. And I go, well, I still got to go to an ATM machine. I might as well just hit the language, you know, yeah. ask you both languages. You know. Yeah, Bermuda, it's, I always, it's always like $100 to get down. Yeah. Uh, to thank this. God we get travel per diem. Yeah. You know, be reimbursed, but I mean, yeah. I'm like, wow. For no. a cab ride, I don't take. Uh, I don't. That's take, a flight. <laughs> I don't take Rick's like Jamaica. I don't uh, wander beyond the Epcot Centery part they have there for the people. <laughs> There's like it, like they built their own little like Jamaica port. port. You walk, There's I walk, literally a barbed wire fence, there, and I walk to the <laughs> gate and look out. I look through the gate like this and go, and it's The Walking Dead. It's like uh, you know, I don't know what they have to do to we spruce it up. We're not telling you not to take vacations. No, we're not we're saying that. We're not saying that. We're just saying we don't take the risks. Do you know what I mean? I don't take the. I don't get off and. Jump. But I'll talk to people like, oh yeah, it was rough. I just walked through the gate. They wanted to braid our hair, buy their CDs and stuff. But then yeah. once you get past that, it was all. Yeah, you know, we felt like yeah. it was okay. Because like, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like in the old days you would get off, the ship would stop. This is before I was doing. I'm just assuming. Yeah. You'd get off at the Falmouth, and then you would actually be in Falmouth. Yeah, but now like Cozumel and Fama, they've built these areas, artificial market marketplaces, yeah. I guess, and then people have to buy a, a license or probably a to a permit the booth to, be in to the, have the a store booth. in there. Right, so you're not really even when you get off the ship, you're not really in Falmouth. Yeah. You're in this yeah. Epcot there's Center. a Dairy Queen, and there's, there's a, a Dairy there's Queen. a there's a Starbucks. No, but the and there's and then there's the drop off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think maybe if more people went in, the the city itself would pick up. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not bad mouthing it or anything. I'm just saying that it seems uh, probably uh, 30 years ago when you took a cruise, you would actually be yeah in these. No, I remember uh, one of the first cruises that I ever uh, my my band when I had a country band, we got hired to be on a a, a carnival cruise for a country. The, the country bar in Denver did their own oh, cruise, yeah. you know, so we got hired to entertain. And, uh, we went to, um, uh, Jamaica. And I remember taking a bus from the, the ship over to the beach area where they yeah. wanted us to go. And we went past like areas that people had houses made out of car doors. You know, car doors, car doors, a lot of rebar. Was like, yeah, there was yeah. just stuff, and I, I, I felt horrible. Right. I felt like you do feel. Bad. I felt bad. Like, why am I on vacation? Right. You know, I'm going to go to this resort and play in the beach, and these guys are sleeping under a, a, a car door. You but know? you have to think, what are the, what's going on that the money's not filtering down? Right. It's not my fault. Your country no. is like this, but right. it's making me feel bad. Yeah. And there's a lot of poverty. I mean, it's uh, we don't. I don't think we have anything like that in the United States. No, and that's what I always get back to. Our annoys me with our people of the United States about our poor. Our poor, what that have cable, have food, have our poor are nothing like poor like the rest of the world. Right. In California, you have these tent cities going up. I know by Angel Stadium, there was yeah, like seen the, down by the wash. It was like road miles and miles, miles of tents and stuff, and yeah. you're just like, geez, yeah. And now they're, uh, and most of it is isolated within LA or maybe a little bit down the coast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but now <clears throat> I live in the northeastern corner of LA County and they've put in the, uh, the commuter lines back in. And so now I wake up and I look over and there's somebody camping out at the Little League field. Because they can get more, they tra- travel more. So <laughs> yeah, they can get on the train, train and come out. Then they walk around, they pitch their tent yeah. at the Little League field. And I'm like, you can't, you can't do this. You can't. The kids are going to play here, and yeah. now there's, and the, the, with that person there, and I don't, I'm not saying he's guilty, but now there's needles laying around the little league field. Yeah. 
Where's your compassion? You know, you have to... Where is your compassion? I have no compassion for that. Some kid steps on that, now he has hepatitis or something like that? Come on. Where Don't you feel like you should buy that man a, no. uh, a home? <laughs> don't, don't, you, don't you think you should give him a, an area where he can use those needles properly? <laughs> Or give them free needles. Free needles? I mean, San Francisco, you see some videos online of... Uh, How much piles of human crap in the streets? Oh, Lord. How, Lord. Do, how do people live like that? And how do you see that and still not go, this is wrong? It is wrong. It is wrong. But how do the people, like leaders and other people, like, it's like, oh my, they're just, they are just they need a place. They need to be able to poop in the streets without getting a ticket. The problem with California is they govern for the poorest. You have to govern for the middle class. Am I right? Right. You have to govern for not the, for the rich. For, not for the rich. They don't but need for the middle class. For the class. middle class. The, the middle, people the who work, the people who are going to school, their kids are going to school, people who kids are in Little League. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Hard the people that drive good people. every society for yeah. for eternity. Yeah. Going back to Rome. You have to have yeah. the middle class. You have to have that middle class. And if all the legislation is for the, the super poor, I'm not saying don't help them. But that shouldn't they, they should not be your focus. If you yeah. focus on the middle class, making that stronger well, what it I, lifts the everybody. What I've said on here before and I've said is that welfare is there to help you not to live on. And that sound uh, where's your compassion? Yeah. It's a it's a, it was a, designed as a net to right. catch you when you lose stuff. Here's some money to help you till you get back on your feet. Yes. Not designed to live on. To support you for support all your you life. Support you forever. And not to, for you to teach you the next generation how to cheat the welfare system. Right. It's not designed that way. But then you go, well, we need to change it. <gasps> Racist. No, there's a lot of white people. On there's the mostly white, white, white people. people. You Most know of those I mean? ten cities are. So that's one of the things that I've liked about Trump is that he's at least come along and he's getting rid of the PC in a way. Because it's like, let's just talk facts. Let's talk truth. Let's fix things. You can't fix things if you don't say what they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. I do like, because, and you start seeing it more and more if you're on social media of like, your words don't mean anything anymore to me. Like, you can call me any name you want to. Doesn't matter anymore. You know, yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a homophobe. I'm not a this. I'm right. not a. Because that used to be just the word that you would throw out to to shut down any conversation. Why is that? Because you're homophobic? Yeah. No. Not just because I don't want uh, somebody to touch my dick when I'm peeing. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> that does, you know what I mean? You might just be a pervert. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the ten cities. Like it's. I would say that's mostly white people. In if you see pictures, it, it, it is. The, from the video I've seen. Yeah, I've never, a, lot of, a lot of the dreadlock you kind of guys, they just want, this is, I'm just surviving kind of thing. I like, I'm. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can't, once you tolerate that a little bit, say, you know, you can't live along the river like this. You can't do, Why there's, not? there's a neighborhood over here. Now you're bringing. I'm not going over there, though. They do go over there. They do go over yeah. there. And there's a lot of, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I can't, if, if right. I was in that situation, I would steal to survive. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If I lived in the tent. If you live and you know just over there, they got some big screen TVs. And there's a, there's a shirt hanging from the yeah, thing. I'm they're go, down on the line. I'm going to go get it. Yeah. There's a bike. Yeah. I could use a bike, yeah. right? I, yeah. There's a canoe. I'm going to take that canoe and put it in the dry river and wait for the rains to come. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you, buddy. I hear you. <laughs> I don't blame them for stealing, but you can't. Uh, well, of course, you blame them for stealing because it's wrong. But uh, well, you goes, can see you can see why they would steal. Well, is it was it the whole premise of the of uh, Le Miserable? Was it like he stole bread for his family to feed the family? Yes, and then he was the right. Now he's the right. But that was an understandable thing. Yes, and 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 I've heard this that argument of like, well, you just steal because you the things that you need. No, people don't. They just steal these days. People will steal. People Let, just steal things. I I was coming from my kids. Uh, I just bought this new uh, cooler, just an igloo cooler, one of the big ones. Yeah. With the measuring thing on it for fish, whatever. And I had it in my back of my pickup truck, and I was taking my kids little league. They had hot practice, so I filled it with water for them, bottles of water. Then I dropped them off for the movies. Yeah. And I was literally, I left my truck, coolers in the back, filled with empty water bottles. Uh huh. And I go up, I pay for all the kids' movies, I come back, cooler's gone. 
So now, I when I have a cooler, I have to I have a chain locked and a lock. locked down. Yeah, I had a who I had who a, takes a cooler? Yeah. Why would you I'll know? pull up and get it. We'll get it. <laughs> and then it has to go down that that. It quick. was that they, fast. They so you know, people are just sitting in. there waiting for people to come in. It, it was a lesson to me. I'm like, oh. Yeah, I had a, a, a fishing rod stolen like that. I was I was fishing on a pier, and I I'd started fishing like in the mid mid section of the pier. Yeah. And I, you know, if you fish, you take two or three rods with you. you yeah. One breaks or different lures, and and so I had left my one of my rods on the thing and walked to the end of the pier to fish yeah and not paid to come back my rod and some tackles gone gone, gone. yeah gone right yeah who people just steal today. people will steal anything. it's not it's not taught that you don't steal stealing is bad you know nowadays nobody's bad nobody's bad nobody's wrong yeah i mean we live in a nice i live in a nice area and i I took this old beam and I made a, a barn bench. It's like eight feet long, thick wood. It's like a four by twelve with four by twelve legs. You know, just a barn yeah. bench. It's rustic looking, and it's it goes under my front window on my front porch. Front porch. All right, so I'm thinking, dude, do I dr- drill a hole and put a cable through that so nobody so it steals my bench? But now, it, you know, but yeah. I I didn't. Well, I feel- if you can lift it and run off with that, God love you. I'll make another one. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna. But I feel that way about uh, a lot of times my my holiday decorations. Like oh, yeah. I, like I used to not feel bad about putting out like a you know, the six foot pump pumpkin scarecrow yeah. for. Now I think if I put this out early, somebody's just going to steal it. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that isn't that a horrible it's, way it's to bad think? That, that's how... We can't feel like I want to decorate my lawn because some somebody's just going to steal this. Yeah, people steal mail. Like in L.A., big problem is like they follow UPS trucks around and. Mm-hmm. They just packages on the porch gone. <laughs> I don't get it. Can't we just start shooting them? Can't we just? Isn't that the? Wouldn't that be? That's another one of the my, my gripes too about loot, like looting. Yeah. When they talk about looting or some of the other, shoot them. Seriously, just shoot, shoot the looters. Them. Shoot the looters. So somebody's running down the. Maybe they're returning to, the television. Oh, maybe they're not. And now you've maybe they're now, not. Now you've murdered somebody. Right. But uh, <laughs> but my uh. There's a there's a re- it's a true thing about Texas City. Texas City, Texas had an oil refinery. Yeah, and it blew up, and most of the town was. Uh, this is years ago. Oh, that wasn't that long ago, was it? No, this is back in the forties. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, my granddad was a cop at the time, and they were told, "Shoot the looters." Jeez. They were that that was at the time because right. You don't loot. It was just don't you shoot one. They're gonna set the. They're gonna shoot. Yeah. Set it down. They're gonna right. set. You know the law. You're not supposed to steal. Right. And now they're like, well, you know, let them, just let it go. Let them steal. Is it worth Is it worth a life? You're just going to be replaced. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thin, thin this herd. Don't you, do you sort of agree? You're kind of not. I, I don't know. Why. I don't know if I killed somebody over a TV from a store. But see, that's the, but then that perpetuates. Yeah. That perpetuates stealing is okay. Hey, I did this once. I'll do it again. You know? Maybe you don't kill them, but maybe you just, <laughs> but then, you know, you'll win hey, them, but now you're shot. being sued. Some bird shot. But now, yeah, I got some number eight. Well, I know in the LA riots, the the store owners got on their roofs with rifles and yeah. stuff like that. I put an end to that right quick. Yeah, because you, you know, yeah. you know, it's kind of like whacking that one fly on the wall and the other scatter, you know, like, oh. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I just feel like uh, I know California. In my mind, it's going downhill. Well, I think we have been told to for too long the word tolerate. I don't like the word. You need to tolerate. You're not tolerant. You're not. You're not supposed to be tolerant. You, you would you tolerate bad behavior in your kid? No. Would you tolerate bad service at a at a restaurant? Would you? You know. Would I, be- I shouldn't. I know. I do tolerate bad service. I'm like, I don't know if I was a bad waiter in my past life, but I have the worst. You, you'll be like, oh, they're probably in the weeds. I get, I get the worst service whenever I, usually it's with my wife. Like Pizza Hut used to have restaurants. Yeah. Do they still have restaurants? Yeah. Still have restaurants. yeah. And uh, this is in Traverse City, Michigan, and we're at the Pizza Hut, and we ordered like an hour later. Still nothing? Still nothing. So I go find the manager. He's like, oh, she left. She just left. Like quit? And she had quit? Or no, she, she was, it's just her, uh, her, her, her. She was she, done. Ship was up. She her just ship. left. 
I'm like, oh, okay. Well, here's what we need. <laughs> I got a bunch of starving kids over here. And, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. <laughs> well, thanks for doing the podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Take it. Tell This is where I say... Now tell everybody how to find you. Do you have, you have websites? Uh, I have uh, I have a new album out. Okay. It's called I'm Very Disappointed in You. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can get that on iTunes or Google Play, or you can go to dansonstage.com, which is my website, uh-huh. which is a brand new website, but right now it's just a portal to buy my new album. It's Dan's but, uh, on Stage. Dansonstage.com. Also, my Facebook page is Dan's on Stage. So if you ever want to reach me or anything like that, that's how that's how you get a hold of me. Well, good, good. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, spell spell your name. I know I said Dan Greeter, but people it is Greeter. Yeah, it's, but, uh, it, but it's it's does it look like Greeter? It is. That's why I use Dan's on stage. Yeah. Rather, it's uh, G R U E T E R. Okay. Yes. That way people can Google you too. People can and, Google yeah, me as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. I appreciate you doing it. Thanks for having me. Guys, thanks for listening. Uh, appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast. And uh, that's the only way we get this thing to grow is because you share it with your friends. So until next time, God bless America. Go listen to some Oak Ridge Boys. I bid you adieu. And trucks and stooges, three men and boys, and that doesn't sound right. He thinks about boobs and bacon and power tools. Come with me, let your masculine. Oh, won't you come with me and remind?